everyone, my name is Matthew Griffin, better known as a fanatical futurist. I'm a 15 times author. I track over 600 emerging technologies, 350 megatrends. This is a, this, that's me. That's me when I'm standing up. So this is the fanaticalfuturist.com website. So there are over 5,000 news articles on it. Uh, I'm a keynote speaker. Uh, you can grab books. So if you uh, go here, Let's have a look. Uh, if you click this link here, you can download 15, every single one of my books for free. And these things are monsters. You know, they always say nothing good is ever given away for free. But I mean, just because it's thick doesn't mean it's good. But this is a complete A to Z of building a multi-billion dollar business, uh, let alone basically the, uh, the trends codex. Here we go. Um, uh, let alone basically the emerging technology codex. Uh, so there's over 400 pages there. Uh, there are about 300 emerging technologies up to 2000 years out, including things like liquid artificial intelligence, who knew? And then on top of that, I mean, I have to mention this because this is actually down to you guys. Thank you very much for liking and subscribing because Google has been sending me stuff. I mean, I really need to realign the camera, don't I? So. Yes, that's it. We are now an award-winning, I don't know, YouTube creator, whatever. Um, thank you, guys. Um, I'm now approaching a million subs, basically across the 311 Institute channel and the Fanatical Futurist channel. And let's stop my yammering and let's get on and go and explore the future. Right, so these are the 12 news stories from the past 12 days. These are the things that I found from around the world. I bring it all together and then I... I literally talk in your face, uh, telling you about them so that you can hopefully understand a little bit more about some of the science and technology breakthroughs that are happening around the world, what they are, who's doing them, and why you should care and what their impacts are. So, let's go. Um, so, uh, when we have a look at the use of artificial intelligence to defend uh, businesses against cyber criminals, which is a $7 trillion industry now, by the way, from a cyber criminal perspective. Um, one of the interesting uses of artificial intelligence is to use artificial intelligence to do your own penetration testing. So by turning AI inward and trying to get it to find how you would be hacked and how it would hack you from the inside out, um, you can actually find vulnerabilities basically within your business and then you can use AI as well as humans basically to go and patch those vulnerabilities before the criminals find you and get you. Um, so this is called the Cyber Predator and Prey model. It's brand new. No one else has seen it yet other than people at Fortinet who I gave a keynote on it to. Check out the YouTube channel for that one. Um, Elon Musk. Elon Musk, you can't get away from him, even if you might be trying. Um, so Elon Musk basically wants to give Mars its own version of Starlink. So it's no secret that Elon Musk wants to use SpaceX to colonize Mars with the Mars Heavy uh, launch lift vehicle that he's been uh, experimenting with and blowing up quite nicely in, what is it, rapid, rapid disassembly uh, moments. So Elon Musk basically wants to give Mars its own version of Starlink. That's nice for him. Uh, in China, basically, we've developed a brand new hypersonic rocket engine. Um, it's kind of like a single stage rocket engine, but it has no moving parts. So one of the biggest problems that we see with traditional jet engines is they've got lots of moving parts and they have to act in harmony. And if one of them goes wrong, goes awry, gets loose, ugh, nasty things happen. Um, so we now have a new kind of hypersonic propulsion system. Um, <laughs> something that Elon Musk basically might not like, that's it, especially if he's going true anti-woke. That's it. Hello, Elon. Um, Anthropic have hired a welfare officer. There's no special news in that, but they've hired a welfare officer for their artificial intelligence because Anthropic really isn't too sure whether or not their artificial intelligences will become sentient. However, they, if they do become sentient, then the Anthropic CEO says they really need a way to understand the, the inner workings, the mind of these sentient artificial intelligences, and make sure that they feel okay. So, how weird is that as a story? Go and click on that one and, um, you know, just don't. 
Uh, go and tell people down the pub. I see that uh, Anthropic has hired an AI welfare officer for but for sentient AIs. Nice. Um, so as Elon Musk basically now uh, possibly looks to uh, head towards the White House with his buddy Donald, um, he's floated the idea of using cryptocurrency to pay off the US national debt. Now, on the one hand, that's interesting. But the US national debt is at all time record highs. It's at $35 trillion. And while he thinks he might be able to get $2 trillion worth of government efficiencies through his Doge initiative, I mean, you need a lot of cryptocurrency to start paying off the US debt. Unless, of course, you have an artificial intelligence that can pump up a variety of different cryptocurrencies, as we saw with the Gotius Maximus psychotic artificial intelligence bot. Check that one out. So just literally search uh, goat AI main coin on the Fanatical Futurist website. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. It is the most bonkers story you have ever heard. If we get artificial intelligence to actually pump up the value of main coins and cryptocurrencies, yeah, who knows? Maybe you could pay off a teensy wincy little bit of American debt. Anyway, um, keeping on the Mars theme, um, even though we have not colonized Mars, the only thing that's landed on Mars basically are helicopters and rovers and all that kind of stuff. Uh, there are people thinking about creating blockchain networks basically on Mars. And if you want to create a blockchain network on Mars, then you need a neuromorphic computing platform because you can distribute everything to the edge. It takes 44 minutes for a signal to reach Earth from Mars, which in traditional block term computing terms, just wouldn't hack it. So let's go full neuromorphic. Um, we've got an organization in Europe that is now starting to uh, test its first experimental single stage to orbit aircraft. So these are called SSTOs. Now, if you're a sci-fi nut and you watch uh, Star Wars, especially Star Trek, um, have you ever noticed basically that Star Trek, you know, uh, when things are taking off from Earth, they don't have two stages. You don't see half of the vehicle being ejected with Captain Picard basically in the back going, what the hell? Um, they just take off, they go into orbit, and then they travel to Jupiter, or wherever they're off to. So uh, single-stage aerospike engines are actually now getting good. They're not commercial, they're not mature, but they're getting good. Um, now, we've seen uh, China. So China, Chinese companies have been banned by uh, the American government from buying NVIDIA GPUs and everything else. They've been scavenging GPUs from all over the place, like game machines and healthcare systems and everything else, which you know, is slightly freaky, but I kind of get the point. Um, for the first time ever, we've seen a group of researchers train a generative artificial intelligence model across distributed data centers and compute resources. Normally we have a huge data center, we train all these AI models in there. But China has unlocked a major advance. Um, and then again, Chinese companies have also cut inferencing costs. So these are companies basically like, um, oh, I forget the name, let's go and have a little quick look. Uh, these are companies basically like, uh, dot ai who is the dot ai one where is he where is he oh look that's me um so step fun minimax uh baidu here we go oh where oa dot ai especially has found a way to reduce inferencing costs by 90 percent, which basically means that chinese models are 90% cheaper than the best Western models. We can always have a debate about that, but I'm being quick. Um, so that will give the Chinese and the people who the Chinese are selling artificial intelligence-based services to a commercial advantage in the marketplace. It's enough of a difference to be disruptive. Um, and then sort of rather hilariously, uh, the Chinese army unsurprisingly, have found that trying to shoot drones out of the sky is completely pointless. Um, so while China is 
really well ahead in 38 out of 44 emerging technology categories, uh, as I've spoken about before. Um, I do find it rather amusing, basically, that, you know, they've developed hypersonic weapons, quantum radars, uh, they've got infinitely firing laser si laser systems, uh, and what we're calling, you know, sort of direct energy weapons. Uh, they've built drone motherships. Uh, they're doing all kinds of crazy, quite interesting things, actually. Uh, I can imagine the PLA basically sort of standing with a rifle going, <laughs> oh, I missed. Um, that's it. So, uh, I mean, it's almost like one of those experiments that, you know, you sort of go, of course you can't shoot drones out of the sky by using machine guns and everything else. It's really difficult. But someone in the Chinese PLA went, why not have a go at it? Um, fair play. Um, then we've got uh, Cloudflare. So a lot of organizations are absolutely fed up of their websites being scraped by artificial intelligence bots like those from, Art from OpenAI, Meta, Google, etc. And their website data being used to train those AIs. It happens with my websites as well. Um, Cloudflare, on the one hand, is now providing people with the tools to identify bots that are scraping your websites and get them to stop. However, they've also introduced a new sort of pay system that means there is a marketplace evolving where I, as a web developer, could could subscribe to this marketplace and then allow people to scrape data from my websites, but then they pay me. So Cloudflare's artificial intelligence bot botherer um, is sort of quite interesting. And then we've also seen the development of a new artificial intelligence business model where the guy who invented advertising on the internet of all things, as I've spoken about previously, um, has found a way to commercialize and help companies profit from artificial intelligences that are accessing their data and all that kind of stuff. So that's sort of, uh, go and check that out. It, it's in this, it'll be in this one here. Um, and then uh, these are the five steps, might as well open it. These are the five steps that OpenAI believes their artificial intelligences will have to master before they can build multi billion dollar businesses by themselves again as i've discussed in the past uh so here we go so stage one um it's like it's like sam altman's to-do list stage one create a chat bot uh stage two stage two create an ai that reasons stage three create agentic ai stage three create innovative ai stage three create an ai that knows how to put an organization together um, it's fantastic that Sam has actually put this together. Uh, it's fantastic that he now knows how to actually get AIs to build companies. Um, I did mine the old fashioned way, but I do look forward to the point when I can say to an AI, create a multi-billion dollar software company and it just does it. And that's not actually that far away. So with that thought, I will leave you to whatever else you're doing on the rest of the day. Thank you very much for listening, and I'll speak to you all soon. Goodbye.